Now, if you're going to attempt to play without a shoulder rest, I think first and foremost it's really critical um, to have a proper setup. Um, now, if you look at me, look at my physique, I've got a relatively long neck, the distance between my collarbone here and my chin, that's a good three inches, maybe maybe more. And if you look at the thickness of a, of a violin with a standard chin rest, that may not be enough thickness to fill that gap. And in, ca in, in, in fact, in this case, um, if you're playing without a rest, you want to have your violin on or very, very close to the collarbone. And um, so the violin is sitting relatively low. And here, if you look at my position, um, I have to bend my head quite a bit in order to get it to contact the chin rest and turn sideways. So you can see how much bend I need in my head to touch the chin rest. That's not good. So first and foremost, um, um, before I even attempted to play without a shoulder rest, I got um, uh, a raised chin rest. So let me show you what I have. This is my primary fiddle. And if you look at the chin rest here, you'll see that there's um, it's, it's raised up a fair bit. Um, this particular chin rest is raised by 15 millimeters, so it's, it's actually 15 millimeters higher than a standard chin rest. And what that does is, it, now that the violin is no longer sitting up on the shoulder rest, sitting on my collarbone, it fills up the extra gap underneath my chin. So now I'm able to put my chin down with just a little bit of bend, a little bit of forward tilt in the head. You don't want the head back with this, all of this filled. You want a little bit of gap here, and so this is a fairly comfortable playing position for me. And so the head is also not tilted uh, left or right a whole lot, and it just has a little tilt forward, and that's pretty much what, you, what you're shooting for. Um, I do want to mention that um, in, my, in, pr in the process of going restless, I consulted with um, the expert advice of Lynn Denig, at uh, chinrest.com, and also my current teacher, um, Ron Muchnick, who knows about um, as much about violin as anybody I've ever met. So they've given me quite a bit of support. If you want to try and play without a shoulder rest, I'd suggest that you get um, some professional um, guidance in doing it. So these are just some of my personal experiences, so they may not apply to everyone. Now, um, the second thing about uh, uh, playing without a shoulder rest is that the violin sits right on the collarbone and that can be kind of painful and uh, there's a couple solutions to that. Um, what I did for actually a pretty long time, a good eight months, I used one of these um, cosmetic sponges. You can see this is a, a thin cosmetic sponge. Um, you can get this at a beauty supply store. Sally Beauty Supply carries them um, at their retail stores or you can buy them online. And um, what, this, what I did with this was I put it on the back of the violin right where, with a rubber band, right where the violin contacts the collarbone. So that acts as kind of a cushion so that the collarbone is not taking the direct weight of um, the violin. In fact, this actually this particular uh, chin rest is um, center mounted, but um, my, my instrument sounds better with a side mount um, chin rest and you get these clamps sitting right on your collarbone and that's very painful. Uh, some people have had uh, good luck with a piece of chamois cloth or something like that. I haven't tried it. Um, this seemed to have worked pretty well for me. So this is what I used initially. Now the problem is that um, collarbone is, doesn't protrude a whole lot. It's not a real big thing for your violin to sit on. And I always felt like there was this sort of um, tendency or feeling that the violin was always slipping off my collarbone and I had to put a lot of pressure down onto the chin rest to keep the, uh, the violin in place. So I went from lifting my left shoulder and having a lot of tension to pressing down a lot with my head and having a lot of force um, down on the chin, um, putting a lot of stress on the muscles back here and also ending up with an achy collarbone. So about 
four months ago, um, John Cad sent me one of his um, inventions. He doesn't really have a name for it, so I call it the Cad Pad. And I'll, I'll show that a little bit. Um, now, the Cad Pad uh, consists of two parts. There's one part that actually um, clamps or tie wraps on to the clamps on the chin rest. So this is um, this is a, a little a little piece, and I've got a, a tie wrap right here, and a tie wrap, or some people call them cable ties, right here. And this is a very very thin. It's a very thin piece of material, and a very key part of how this works is that this material has a very high coefficient of friction, right? So the other part is the collar piece. The collar piece looks like this, and this um, inside here, I think there's a metal plate. It's quite, it's quite hard, and this actually goes around your neck, and this covers the collarbone. So this really cured the issue with the achy collarbone because nothing really contacts directly my collarbone now except this, which is, which is fairly um, soft and it's got a little bit of soft material on the bottom, and then there's this, um, this little strap with a buckle on it. Um, one thing I found was that I didn't really like the feel of this strap on my neck, so I actually made a, a sleeve. There's a sleeve here. You can probably see it. It's maybe a little hard to see, but this is a sleeve that, uh, that I made out of silk, and it makes it feel really nice around my neck, and I almost don't even notice that it's there. So this, this clips right on, and then, so the way this gizmo works is um, you have this piece on the chin rest, then you have this piece here, and when you put them together, there's really an, a tremendous amount of friction in between these two pieces. So what that does is with a minimal amount of um, pressure on the chin rest, almost none, I can, I can shift freely. Even with, the, even with the friction that's on my hand here on the violin, I don't need to really put much pressure at all. You can kind of see, watch as I move my hand out and out, in and out, you can kind of see what's happening. You see this, uh, see this, it's kind of taking, taking this stress and kind of keeping the violin in place. The violin is not, I no longer <coughs> have the sensation that the violin is ready to slip off my collarbone at any moment in time. So this has really uh, worked really well for me. I've, I've been using it for, uh, I think, three, about two or three months now. And for now, it seems like a really good setup for me.